Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to this week video, which will be a part of a new series that I call Tourney Compendium and where I will give you all useful information about tourney. In this tome 1, we will cover all the basics you need to know about tourney, before jumping into more complex matters next week. When I say basics, I don't mean the stuff you're supposed to all know like the different types of tokens or the fact that you have 4 free fights every day on your local tourney grounds. I didn't want to waste time with this kind of things, but if a lot of people ask for that, I will consider doing a tome 0. Basics mean the mechanics of how tourney works in general, because a lot of things are hidden or not well explained by the game. You need to have this knowledge before we discuss strategy next week, so listen carefully. Before starting, I wanted to give all credits of this video to Walt Clementson of Server 372. He wrote a very deep guide about tourney, and most of the stuff I'm going to share with you today come from this guide. In the description you will find the link to it, so if you're interested about tourney and love reading, be sure to download it, it's really good. So huge, thanks to you, Walt. To kick things off, let's define tourney as the activity of competing against another player, where you send one of your heroes to fight against all of his. As such, there are three different types of tourneys, local tourney, cross-server tourney and alliance deathmatch. Local tourney happens in tourney grounds, and you can access them as soon as you have 15 heroes or more, with one of them being at least level 60. In here, you compete against players of your own server every day as a part of your daily routine to score tourney and quality points. Every 4 weeks, a tourney score challenge becomes active and for 2 days, you want to score as many points as you can to compete for a king title and some rewards. Outside of this challenge, please note that local tourney scores are useless and should not be any kind of concern for anybody. Cross-server tourney challenge happens every 4 weeks right after the local tourney challenge. The top 100 players with the best score in that local challenge qualifies for the cross-server tourney, where they will compete against the top 100 of 4 other servers for 2 days. Your goal is again to score as many points as possible, and winner ultimately gets an Emperor title. In this cross-server tourney challenge, there is also a server ranking, meaning you can't fight against players of your own server. At the end of those two days, all points from all players of a server are added to determine the server score, and the server with the highest score wins some additional rewards. Alliance Deathmatch is another cross-server challenge happening every four weeks as well. After an alliance-based local challenge where top 3 alliances qualifies, every player of said 3 alliances are pitted against players of top 3 alliances of 9 other servers. In this elimination type event, 12 rounds of tourney fights will crown the last player alive, who wins an emperor title. All those tourney events are score-based. For every fight you initiate, you get points based on the number of heroes you're able to defeat. You get 2 points per defeated hero, meaning that if you beat 15 heroes, you get 30 points. On the other side, the player you attack will lose points, 1 point for every hero defeated. This means that your score will change, but not only when you play. Players can attack you at any time, and you will lose points if they manage to defeat some of your heroes. Since those points are used to determine progress rewards and rankings of these challenges, your ultimate goal is to be able to score as many points as possible when you're attacking, but also to lose as few points as possible when other players attack you. More on that when we'll discuss strategy. Note that using a dueling token, all tourney points are doubled, you win 4 points for each hero you defeat, and opponent loses 2 points. They are especially useful when you attack as they help you getting a better score overall. The only exception to this is Alliance Deathmatch, where using a dueling token will not double the points you're scoring, but will still make your opponent lose 2 points per hero defeated. In Alliance Deathmatch, dueling tokens won't improve your own score but will help you pushing an opponent out of the elimination cut for the next line. Again, outside of those challenges, tourney score is useless so nobody should take it personally if they're being attacked and see their score going down. It just means they are a good source of tourney XP points and quality points for others so if it's happening to you, don't worry. At the very least you're being useful to other players because they gain XP and quality from you. Now let's jump into a battle and see what happens there. A fight is made of rounds, and in each round you're introduced to three heroes from your opponent, one of whom you have to choose to battle against. If you win, you will gain 2 tourney experience points, 2 quality experience points for the hero you're fighting with, and 1 flame, which are used to purchase buffs. Every 3 wins, you get to open a chest containing an extra reward. 
It can be either bonus tourney XP points, quality XP points or a challenge token. After you have selected the hero you will face, heroes take turns attacking each other. The first hero to lose all his health loses the round. But note that if after each hero has attacked 200 times and none of them is out of health, the fight stops and whoever has the most health left is considered the winner. This is not health percentage but rather the number of hit points remaining that determines the winner. An example, your hero starts with 10,000 HP, and your opponent 20,000 HP. After 200 attacks, your hero has 9,000 HP left, so 90% of his health, and your opponent has 12,000 HP left, 60% of his health. Your opponent is still the winner here, because 12,000 is higher than 9,000. Health, or hit points, or HP, is the attribute score of the hero. When strong heroes fight each other, the 200 attack limit is the most common way for a round to end. So having heroes with high attribute scores is a clear advantage. How do you do that? Paragons my friends. In local tourney and alliance deathmatch, the round organization follows a clear pattern. Every three rounds, the three heroes you have to pick from are drawn from the best 12 heroes of your opponent's remaining heroes, sorted by attribute score. This is called a wall round, because against a tough opponent you know that every three rounds you run into a wall of strong heroes. The other rounds are random, meaning that any three alive heroes can be picked by the game to be your next opponents. If you're unlucky, they can all be strong as well. In cross-server tourney, the wall does not exist. No clear pattern has been datamined to explain how heroes are chosen, meaning that all rounds are most likely fully randomized. In all rounds, there also is a pattern in which heroes are presented to you. In non-wall rounds, they are sorted by hero ID, lowest on the left and highest on the right. Here is on screen a list of known hero ID numbers. More on that next week. In wall rounds, they are sorted by attributes. The hero with the highest attributes will always be on the left, and the one with lowest attributes on the right. During wall rounds, on manual mode, you always want to fight to rightmost hero as this will be the weakest of the three. The wall is the most important thing to know when playing tourney. It will dictate almost all strategies you can opt for, so keep this concept in mind for next week. In tourney, three stats matter, quality, attributes and tourney skills. Let's look at each of them. First, quality. It determines your attack power, following this formula, overall quality, times 90, plus 200. We don't know exactly how attack power translates into actual damage yet, but high quality means high damage. Quality is therefore really important. Note that military quality has no bonus compared to other sorts. A hero with 500 fortune quality will do as much damage as a hero with 500 military quality. Second, attributes. As explained before, the hero total attribute score converts into his health, or hit points, or HP. Because of the 200 attacks limit, attributes play a major role for strong heroes, and this is where heroes with maxed paragons and high maiden bonds will shine against not so well optimized heroes with similar quality. Third, tourney skills. These are the two stats increased on the tourney skills tab of each hero screen, with tourney experience gained in tourney grounds, training grounds or with various tourney manuscripts. Ferocity increases the hero's critical chance, and brutality increases the hero's critical damage. Both skills max out at level 200, or 70% critical chance and 700% critical damage. Boosting these stats is the main reason why a hero can clear out an opponent's roster even if they have several heroes of higher quality than yours. Note that brutality and ferocity also work even if the hero is the defender. Speaking about boosts and buffs, let's talk about flames. After each round that you win during a fight, you will gain one flame and the option of spending flames or gems to strengthen your hero for the duration of the entire fight, not only the next round. However, when the fight is over, bonuses go away. There are three types of buff, tourney skills, attack power and HP. Tourney skills buff affect both your critical chance and critical damage, attack power buff improves your base attack stat, and HP buff heals your hero on a percentage basis. Note that tourney skills boosts are relative to your base critical chance and critical damage. For example, if your base critical chance is 10% and you choose a 10% tourney skills buff, your base critical chance does not become 20%. Instead, it becomes 11% as 10% of the original 10% gets added. 
A high original critical chance and critical damage make this buff more potent. Nobody knows how damage is calculated but it is accepted wisdom that tourney skills boosts are more valuable than attack power boosts, as long as your tourney skills are not extremely low. That's why you should not underestimate the power of tourney skills, and work on them for every hero you have whenever possible. Invest your gems into training ground spots and constantly have heroes training over there. There are three cost levels for buffs, one flame, two flames or 20 gems. One flame buffs go as high as 15% for tourney skills, 10% for attack power and 5% for HP boost. Two flames buffs go as high as 25% for tourney skills, 15% for attack power and 10% for HP boost. 20 gems buffs go as high as 35% for tourney skills, 20% for attack power and 15% for HP boost. You can also buy a special buff at the beginning of the fight, before the first round. 50% attack bonus for 3 flames, 100% attack bonus for 50 gems or 150% attack bonus for 100 gems. Buying buffs is mandatory to beat opponents with much stronger heroes than yours. But be careful to spend your flames accordingly. For example, if the 1 flame buff is a 13% tourney skills bonus and the 2 flames buff is a 16% tourney skills bonus, buy the 1 flame buff. Try to focus on buffs with values at the upper end of the range. And with that being said, we will stop here for today. You should now have a better understanding of how tourney works, and this knowledge will become handy next week when we will start talking about tourney strategy. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please reach me through the comments section or on Discord. Thank you for watching, and I will see you around next time. Bye bye.